This is caching microservice A through Z. Who cares? I just want to write my function and I want easy access to the dependencies I need. Hi, I'm Kale, and today we're going to talk about dependency injection. Dependency injection is nothing new, but using it to your advantage takes some practice. Today we'll be using a Go web server to show you how to get this done. The easiest form of dependency injection is just function arguments, but this is going to get real sour real fast as we add more and more complexity to our system. Instead, we're going to use Golang's context object. Since we're already using the requests for our web server, we can use the requests built-in context object. As a sample dependency, we'll create a cache manager. First, we'll define the key type as Go contexts use types to ensure uniqueness among values. Using our type, we'll define our key. Next, we'll define the interface our cache manager will expose. For simplicity, it will just have a get and a set method. Now we can create a type which implements our cache executor. We'll just store our data in an in-memory map and create a helper function which will instantiate our in-memory implementation. Finally, we'll implement the executor interface we defined. Now we are going to create a provider interface which has getters for each particular dependency. We'll define a new context key type and key, just like before. And then define an interface for which dependencies we will expose. The reason to use an interface is we can then swap out the injected provider and dependencies without our function caring about it. An example of when we would swap out the dependencies is for tests. We can have our test suite build a mock-in provider that exposes mock dependencies. Let's create our default provider, which will implement our provider interface and have our API server own our provider. To get our provider into each request's context, we'll create a middleware which will inject it onto the original context from the request. We're also going to inject each individual getter into the context. This will help prevent cyclical imports when your project grows and you have nicely separated your code into individual packages. Now we can instantiate our provider, create our server, and router. We'll declare the HTTP handler and implement it in a moment. Next, we'll ask the built-in HTTP package to listen and serve our middleware. To implement our request handler, we'll start by getting our provider from the request's context.
First, we'll check if our request has been cached using our injected cache layer and handle any errors. If the value is cached, we'll just return that. If not, we'll reach out to the database and look up the needed data. We'll do some simple error handling too. We'll return our records as JSON, so let's encode them into a buffer and store the encoded data in our cache. Finally, we can just write our data from our buffer too. After a bit of setup, we now have a system we can use to inject multiple dependencies into individual requests without needing different function signatures depending on the dependencies we need. So now you know how to use dependency injection. Remember to always inject interfaces, not direct implementations. This allows you to swap out your implementation depending on your need such as test cases versus your actual running application. Another key point to remember is to always inject your dependencies by themselves. If you liked this video and you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. And if there's anything you want to learn, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll make a video on it.